to say I have been avoiding actually recording this is an understatement. I know that I polled you guys and I asked you guys and it's my own stupidity that made me do it, I promise. Um, so mukbangs. You know, I watched an amazing documentary um, by Kiana Dougherty, uh, information down below. And I could barely stomach watching it. Not because Kiana didn't do a good job, because she did a fantastic job. She laid it out great. And I will say, if you guys want a comprehensive history of how it started, it's a long video and <laughs> it's a gross video. But she does an amazing job and she does try to keep it to a minimum. It falls into the ASMR category in some ways. Um, but for me... The reason why I want to talk about mukbang is because what started out as a wholesome thing uh, to help lonely Koreans became this absolutely disgusting, pseudo-fetish, semi, just, let's get into it. So, how it started, apparently was uh, people in Korea, you know, you've got almost 50% of the population are single home people. So in Korea, just like with Italian families and some others, it's very important to eat with family. Well, when you're single, you can't do that. So they would have people just literally sit down and eat on a camera, talk to people in, in the chat, and it was great. Great. Then... Apparently, Americans saw it, and it wasn't so bad until you started seeing the fat positivity people do it. Because when I tell you, if you look across it, you're going to see many overweight people latching on to this idea, thinking it is okay for them to do this. Talk about mukbang, baby! Yeah! I really should have asked for more cheese, but I like to put a little on and just fuck that shit up. Mm. It's, uh, they sit there with piles upon piles of food. Um, and I'm also going to notate this. The reason why I'm only sharing screenshots and minimal videos is because I might not be able to stomach getting through the videos. So you guys are going to get pictures. And that's primarily what you're going to get. Because um, I just, I can't. Because to me, as a fat person, food is a pleasure, yes. But food is a pleasure in a way that it's like, it's meant to be had during good times and enjoyable times. Food itself can be the pleasure, absolutely. But not to this excessive gross, uh, just gluttonous extent. I see some of these photos and videos from TikTok now where you've got these, uh, there was this one, and to me, it, it's, it, it definitely um, brings a visual of mukbang to it. It was these cones of pizza, pizza dough. And then they were filled with these messy, sloppy, overflowing macaroni. It was just, it was disgusting looking. And it just makes me never want to eat again. But what I'm getting into also is how the fat positivity movement has taken it over. And it bleeds into a couple other things. Now I'm going to reach in another video, but it also bleeds into the whole what I eat in a day and why I'm allowed to eat it and all that jazz. That'll be in the next installment. But what you see is an amount of people gorging themselves and and making it like it is okay. Like this is something that is part of acceptance. Oh, I'm just enjoying the food and you're here watching me enjoy it. Mm, I don't know. Look at Nick Akato, who, by the way, I literally cannot for two seconds watch any of his videos. Uh, between the fact that that man has a permanent sheen of sweat on his brow. Not only that, but when he does it, he looks just just grotesque. And I don't mean this is a body shaming thing. Because I'm not trying to sound rude, but the man constantly is like 
Like you're seeing like just like the absolute up close, up his nose, up his mouth, food pouring everywhere. And he does it on purpose. And you know who this details to? You know who it really, it, 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 it speaks to? It speaks to people who overeat. It speaks to people who are feeders, who fetishize it, who make it like it's okay. That is perpetuating obesity. That is promoting obesity. Because, you know, that is literally how fat people are detailed in the media. You're sitting here saying that we need to destigmatize fat people and you need to accept fat people, and then you're promoting this just absolute gorging of high calorie disgusting foods like a lot of time these mukbangs if you look at it these are not even good foods they're just unique foods let's put some valentina because you know i'm a real mexicana <laughs> so mm. you guys am i <sighs> i'm salivating so bad Let's eat that potato right there. Mm. Um, and sometimes these people are eating foods that are made to look like not food. It's just gross. It's just overall disgusting. And when it comes into it on TikTok and everything else, they're, they're starting to make it like this is a completely normal thing for someone to do. You've got Trisha Paytas. You've got the Thousand Pound Sisters. You've got a lot of these people who are overweight and their entire identity relies on them staying overweight. So they take part in these things. And then they have the audacity later to complain that people are telling them they're making bad choices. I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but sitting down to a table's worth of food is disgusting. Nobody should be doing that. No one. I don't give credit to the, uh, the, the people in Korea and Japan and China, anyone else that do it. I don't care how scrawny you are. I don't care how thin you are. It's gross. It just is. Look, make your money. But I don't know. I don't see the appeal. I don't know how these people have the money that they do. And also, how the hell do they afford it? How the hell do poor people afford making mukbangs? I watch these, especially if you do like a Chick-fil-A mukbang. That's kind of expensive. That's a little expensive. A little bit. I just... I do believe that that does promote obesity and I do believe it does tie into the body positivity movement because you've got a lot of the people who are loud voices saying you need to be more body positive. You need to be more accepting of who I am. And that's why there's going to be a part two of this video where it goes into the uh, what I eat in a day because frankly, the what I eat in a day, I feel couples with this. So... I want you guys to stay tuned for that one because there's a whole s slew of people doing it and they just, they seem to go hand in hand. They truly seem to go hand in hand because you've got people gorging themselves on food all day long and then showcasing it like it's okay. So that's going to be a whole thing on its own. But going back to the mukbangs, it, it's become this thing where now people act like it's, it's a good phenomenon to take a part of and that it is its own genre. Some people claim, oh, they feel like they're satisfied. But to me, if you're someone who has an eating disorder, right, where you're someone who binge eats, watching that doesn't seem like it's very healthy. Viewing that, absorbing that, taking that in, wouldn't that technically give you more of the urge. That's like having an alcoholic watching a drinking contest. It doesn't make any sense. It's like a sex addict watching porn, but not able to, it just, something about it doesn't sit right with me. And I just think overall, it promotes a gluttony that is just, no. Again, I go back to Nick Akato. This man went from being like 180 pounds to now he's on oxygen. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And none of them are small people. All of these people are people who believe excess is better. Gluttony is better. No. 
That is not body positive. That is not health forward. I don't understand it. I don't understand the perpetuation of it. I can't wrap my brain around it. I was just uh, telling someone earlier, I can't imagine eating that much food to begin with. And, and and it seems to be that these are people that do it for emotional reasons as well. They say apparently this helps them emotionally. How? I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. So uh, I will say to you guys, when it comes to mukbangs, it, I get some of the satisfaction in it. Some. Because you get to see these unique foods. So there's ones where there's really different foods or maybe they're, they're not from where you're from. So if someone's trying just a small selection of unique foods that I can understand. Like maybe they went to a new store, maybe they're in a new country and they're sitting down with their friends and they're having a couple of little things. That makes sense to me. But when they're sitting down with these just, there's this one, it keeps, ever since I watched that documentary, this one little uh, Japanese girl with these uh, frozen mochi and giant strawberries. And it's just showing these mochis the size, like the ball of your fist. And she's got powder on her face. And, and I just, I can't understand sitting down and just go, mm, 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 and, and oh, and then the sexualization of it. Oh my God. Especially when you watch Trisha Paytas. Um, she's just making these like hypersexual sounds of, mm, oh, it's so good. No, no, no. You are literally just trying to turn food into sex. Which I get it. They, you know, produce some of the same hormones in the brain. They give you the same reactions. Ew. Ew. And again, it just goes right back into it being more of a fetish and more of tool of the body positive movement. It's a tool of them to perpetuate that these kind of things are okay. It, it, I've heard it before, like, you know, they put little tidbits in to try to make things more acceptable and more palatable. Gluttony should not be palatable. It has always been a standard that we mocked. And I think it's across the board it should be mocked. It's not attractive for anyone to sit down to a pile of food, triple the size of their stomach, and gorge themselves. And I'm here to tell you folks, in case you didn't catch on, it's not healthy. It's not good. You shouldn't do it. And that's, that, that's all I have to say on it. Because seriously, I... I had a hard enough time looking into this. But uh, so that's my opinion on mukbangs. And I apologize about my dog in the background who is very opinionated about it. See, he hates it too. Okay. He hates him just as much. Um, I, I, it's all I'd say about him because I know that people are going to ask me anyway. So this is my uh, less intense, just straightforward answer of gross, no, bad. <laughs> That's all I had to say about that, guys. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> and guys, that has been another one in my body positivity, fat positivity videos. I will say that I am getting ready to do different things. There's more coming. But um, I, I first have to take out of the way. Thank you, a big, fat, oh my God, overwhelming thank you to my over 700 new subscribers. I, uh, hi everybody, did not expect this. I'm almost at a thousand now. What is even life right now? Thank you all. Um, I also want to thank my patrons. Um, whenever you become a patron of me, guys, you get access like this to um, just me shouting out at the end of the video. You get access to my uh, my uploads a day early. So that's something else that you guys can look forward to. And my patrons, I want to thank Emile DeVry, John Quinn, and Sherry Malosky. You guys are amazing. And um, yeah, just also, please uh, support me over at No System. Right now we are having our anti-sale all proceeds this week that are excess, we will not only match, but we are giving to a local Austin uh, charity called Mobile Loaves and Fishes. So please, 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 if you're feeling generous, help donate with that. 
And otherwise, guys, next weekend is Christmas. So I hope you're getting your last minute shopping. And again, we got some sales going on. But thank you again, everyone. Um, I just, I just appreciate all the support. And I hope I keep giving you the great content you're here for. But I'm going to sign off with everyone. Just please remember to tell the people you love that you love them and to be safe. And guys, I love you all. Be safe. Bye.